Hi everyone, Fritz here. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to study for your micro lab. For those of you who've never gone through a lab practical before, this is gonna be a very different test taking experience than what you've ever gone through before because you won't be sitting down answering questions on a single piece of paper. What you'll be given is a blank piece of paper and it's numbered. The numbers are going to refer to the different lab stations and at each lab station, you'll have to answer the questions that are given to you. So make sure that first you identify what lab station you're at and then list your answers in accordance to the lab station that you're at. Because if you're off track, your answers are gonna be way off. Just know that you might not always be starting at question one. The other thing is that when you get to each lab station, don't expect just one question or one question from a lab saying, what bacteria were you given for this lab? What bacteria yields a positive or negative result? You're gonna be asked procedural questions. You're gonna ask, what does a positive or negative result look like? You're going to be asked, what was the purpose of this stain? All of those things you're gonna to wanna to know for your lab practical. So here we have two different labs, your gram stain as well as your decarboxylation. The gram stain is going to represent an easy set of lab practical questions, pretty straightforward. Whereas your decarboxylation is gonna focus more conceptually. As you can see, just in the length of the question itself, the decarboxylation is gonna be testing you on the material a whole lot harder than we will on the gram stain. But first, let's look at the gram stain. The first question that should be asked at this station is what is stained? And the answer to that is the peptoglycan. So whether it is that it's gram positive or gram negative, the thing that we are staining here is the peptidoglycan. Then it's gonna ask you, what is the purpose of iodine? Again, we're not even touching what bacteria we have here. We're just going through the procedures here. One is gonna be the overall concept. Two is the iodine. Do you remember what step we added iodine and what does it do? The answer is it acts as the mordant. And if you don't remember what the mordant is, a mordant is what allows the primary stain to stick a whole lot better. So if you remember from our gram stain, we added the crystal violet. Then we added the iodine to create the crystal violet iodine complex. That allows the crystal iodine complex to stick to the peptoglycan of gram positive bacteria really, really well. That means that even if we add the decolorizer, the grams alcohol, it won't wash out. Thereby, it won't allow the safranin to stick which will result in us observing that purple color or blue color underneath the microscope. This question is meant to have you focus more on a gram positive bacteria, but it's gonna go in reverse. Moving on to the third question, giving an example of a gram negative bacteria. For mine, we often use E. coli. Now, the two bacteria that we often use in my lab was B. serious and E. coli. So if I was ever stuck in a pinch, I would choose one of these two. If you're one of those people that are like me and you have a hard time with just route memorization, I would say remember the two most common bacteria that had opposite results. E. coli, gram negative, B. serious, gram positive. Remember the two bacteria that you use the most often and if you're in a pinch, pick one of them. Now, the last question. What would a gram negative result look like? As we outlined from our second question, we know that a gram negative result would look pink. Now you could also add in additional features such as gram negative bacteria are typically smaller, but usually they're just asking you for the big overall picture, which is pink versus blue. Now let's get into some harder questions in the form of our decarboxylation lab. The first question that we have here, what does a yellow and purple test tube mean? Meaning that we've already inoculated our bacteria what do the two possible results mean? Here, we're gonna to wanna to say that yellow means that the sugar was metabolized, while a purple test tube means that the amino acid in addition to the sugar was also metabolized. Now you could also elaborate and say that yellow would give you acid end products and a purple test tube means that you have alkaline end products there as well. Because when you break down sugars, it creates acids. When you break down proteins, it creates alkaline end products. That one's kind of like a warm up. Now we get into more of what do we have in the broth in our second question, which is what is the primary and secondary energy source 
in the broth. And I kind of gave this one away when I stated, what does it mean when you have a purple test tube? The primary energy resource in the broth is going to be the sugars, while the secondary energy resources is going to be the proteins. So this is going to be your ornithine, your lysine, or arginine. And the third question that we have here on the decarboxylation side is really testing if we know the material and the purpose of why we conducted this lab. It's asking us if the bacteria has this, it can use the secondary energy source. So we identified that the secondary energy source is the amino acid specific to the test tube. But what does the bacteria have to have in order to process that amino acid? it has to have the operon that is necessary to process that amino acid because all of the bacteria that we inoculate in the test tubes, no problem. They can go after the primary energy resource of the sugar, but not every bacteria is going to have the operon that is going to be able to process arginine, lysine, or ornithine. And if you need a refresh on operons, go ahead and check out the video link right over here. Now the last one here is probably one of the more difficult ones because it actually asks you to tie in two different labs or three potentially here. And it's asking us, name a lab that can confirm or challenge the results of this lab, the decarboxylation lab. Now I'm going to list one of them and that is your TSI lab. That can act as a confirmation for your decarboxylation. But I'd also like to know what is another lab that you guys use in your microbiology lab to confirm or challenge the decarboxylation lab. List that for me down in the comment section below. So now let's zoom back out and take a look at each of these. What does this mean for us? This is more than just representing a set of questions that you might have on your lab practical. This actually might represent the set of questions that you might have on your first and second lab practical meaning that they're just gonna ask you pretty rudimentary things, going through root memorization, such as what is a gram-negative bacteria? What does a gram-negative result look like? It's gonna be pretty easy. And then they're gonna touch on maybe something in here and here. But when you get to your second lab practical, you can expect to be asked certain conceptual things that you learn from your lecture portion of your class and how does it apply to your lab such as operons and gene regulation and then you're also going to want to know how the different labs tie in with one another such as how does your tsi confirm your decarboxylation lab or vice versa here a lot of the labs early on don't really do that but the labs later on definitely do so if you have any additional questions, or if you would like me to make another video like this, please let me know down in the comment section below. Don't forget to check the description for additional study materials. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see all of you guys in the next one.